If you haven't played Dead Space 2 yet, you are missing an absolute treat. If you have played it, you may be wondering how certain scenes or events work. Maybe how the protagonist makes the seamless transitions through the chapters, or even if there are any outer bound secrets hidden off camera to be found. In this video, I'll be doing my best to show you those things, as well as developer tricks and what's happening behind the scenes as we take a look just how does Dead Space 2 work off camera. I'll just remember I'm giving you up for six months so you can do this. At the very start, we see a recording of Isaac talking to Nicole, which is all done on a pre rendered video that plays just in front of the camera. Then, as we talk to Foster, we take a tour through the scenery. At this point, it's the character models and the objects that are moving through the map, but later we'll see this the opposite way around. You may also notice that at first the marker that we see in the background is a full 3D model. However, once up close, it then becomes a 2D animated sequence. You have contact with this marker. It made you see things, didn't it? Things you didn't want to see. It spoke to me. What did it say, Isaac? What did it say to you, Isaac? You hear me, Isaac? I'll get on to some more viewer submissions later in the video, but one of the main requests was to see where the necromorphs come from and go to when entering and leaving a scene. Most of the time, like normal, we can find that the characters and necromorphs spawn inside the vents or wherever they need to be for the scene, then perform whatever animation it is they need to do before disappearing out of shot of the camera. This is similar for most other models too. No real big surprise there, however, one thing I did find that's pretty incredible whilst playing Dead Space 2, and I'm sure if you have played this you'll probably have noticed it too, is the more or less seamless level transitions between chapters and whilst progressing forward through the game. Take for instance how the elevators work. These things don't just travel vertically, they move horizontally and diagonally too to get you to the next part of the map all whilst the player has no idea what direction they are moving in, or even if they're moving at all. There is one elevator ride in particular that uses developer trickery far beyond the others. In Chapter 7, we head up to the Solar Array using this elevator pod. On the way, we go through different sections, such as this tunnel, and then as we come out the top, we see quite an awesome sight in the background. The amazing thing about this is, it isn't the elevator that is moving right now. It's the huge metropolis in the background that it's lowering itself. Bear in mind, I have sped up the video somewhat to show this. Elevators are not the only way we make transitions through the chapters and maps. The developers came up with other creative ways to force us to progress, such as being thrown out into space by this drag tentacle and climbing and falling through events to escape, usually only to find ourselves being in another particularly bad situation. Alright, so I think it's time we took a look at some out of bounds secrets, and one thing that struck me whilst I was out here is just how ginormous the surrounding scenery is, especially when we compare it to some of the locations that we walk around in, which do look pretty big themselves, whilst we're stood inside of them. The scenery outside also sometimes goes further than you'd expect. Take for instance this giant gas cloud that we can see stretching into the distance. However, one of my favourite scenes to explore was whilst in space at the Solar Array. 
As you look down, you can see the huge metropolis of the Sprawl way down below, and it looks pretty incredible from up here. Hence, I could not believe my eyes when I took the camera all the way down to find that the whole metropolis was just a 2D backdrop. You'll notice some parts disappearing due to the culling, but just imagining that this is all 2D is pretty mind-blowing. That's some seriously talented artwork right there. There are also hidden objects out in space during this scene that you can see from a distance without the use of a free camera. Once up close, we do find that they are leftover objects from another part of the map. Nothing too exciting. However, there was one object that I found that I have no idea what it is. I found it during this scene as Isaac gets knocked out into space by the Tormentor. I was way out in space looking around with the camera when suddenly this appeared in shot, and before I knew it, it disappeared again. Thankfully, I did manage to get it to reappear and pause the game as it did. As you can see, it is a long way out from the section of map the action is taking place in, and I don't remember this being anywhere else during the game. But if you do know what it is, then please feel free to drop a comment. I quickly just wanted to show what happens when changing suits inside the store. Now, in the first video, which we took a look at, Outer Bounds Secrets of Dead Space, we found that underneath Isaac's helmet was the lower part of his jaw and neck model. This time around, although the suit swap inside the store itself is the same, it depends on which suit the player selects to what's under his helmet. For instance, inside the engineering suit, we find his head is totally missing. Though surprisingly, inside the heavy classic suit, his head is present. Alright, we're going to go back and take a look at how various scenes from the chapters work now, including the train scene and falling back to the metropolis from the solar array during chapter 7, and then I'm going to cover some viewer submissions to take us towards the end. So first of all, if you remember back at the start of the video where the characters sat at the table moved through the map, well during the train scene, quite the opposite happens. It is the scenery that moves past the train, and we know this because if you take a look underneath, the part of the map that we fall into is pretty much always below us. Possibly the most memorable part of Dead Space 2 for me was being fired out of the ejector seat back down to the metropolis part of the sprawl. It looks pretty awesome and this scene alone took me a couple of hours to record, so I do hope it helps explain how it works. At first, the skyscrapers below, even though they look 3D, are again 2D. Then we avoid this huge chunk of station floating by, and as we enter the tunnel section, it's at this point when the whole background is covered that the skyscrapers then turn into the 3D models. <laughs> then another clever bit of design is the tower vent that we enter is a square pyramid shape which from above gives the illusion of depth. As we enter, we see a flash of white light on the screen, which is to cover the teleport to the next section of map. Projection sequence initiated. 
initiated. Interestingly, in chapter 10, when using the escape pod, we see a different kind of technique used than the last. Believe it or not, we're simply watching a video along with a few camera shakes and rattles, though not actually moving anywhere at all. Kind of fascinating how the developers use these tricks and techniques without the player ever fully knowing what's really happening. It's viewer submission time now, and the first one is from Chicken on Twitter, who wanted a closer look at the eye scene. Well, it doesn't get much closer than this. It's really not as horrifying as you'd expect when looking from this angle, as I guess looking at it like this shows how it's just a game character model. But damn, it really does go in there, doesn't it? Sebastian K96 on Instagram was interested in the pregnant and how the smaller swarms come from its body. So here it is. If you look closely just as its belly bursts, you can see them spawn kind of half in and half outside of the model. Last but not least, Mike on Instagram had a whole bunch of good requests, some of which I'll more than likely follow up this video with some shorts or post them on my social media accounts. One that I can show, however, is taking a better look at the marker. This thing is huge, and I will show a size comparison in just a moment. But first I wanted to show it from a bird's eye view, how the marker is missing the rear part, but then turns into the full model a little later on. Now try and keep your eyes on Isaac as the camera moves out. Hopefully this can give you a rough idea of how big this thing is. Heads up. Thank you so much for watching and your support if there's something that you think i missed that you really want to see then come and join me on twitter discord or instagram and i'll see what i can do for you but until next time as always take care everyone isaac take my hand i'm trying i'm trying Ugh.